pretty good. You can see them? Well, for the most part, there's a couple. <laughs> if you want to be seen here. by him, you'll have to go over there to raise your hand. <laughs> if you don't want to be seen, so you don't want to be seen, right? But you're right in the middle. It's good. You look great, right? You look good. Okay. Perfect. Well, uh, thank you very much for being here today and sitting through a fun accounting topic of effortless accounting. Uh, I'm actually impressed with all the, the other trainings going on right now to pick accounting over the rest of them. I'm impressed. So thanks for being here. Mm -hmm. um, so, all right. I started off by getting all these different pieces put together and I think this is gonna work. Uh, Jeff, testing, testing. So I got an internship with CLA, and uh, I got brought into the not-for-profit sector right away as an auditor and tax preparer, 990s. And so uh, I've been working on foundations, religious organizations, uh, social service, uh, you, can, you name it, I've probably seen an auditor or tax return for that. And so I'm, I'm much more on like the compliance side of things, uh, doing single audits, governmental auditing, things like that, uh, whereas uh, Jeff, on the other hand, a little bit different background. Jeff, I'll let you introduce yourself as well. All right, everybody. It's so good to be with you today virtually. I, I love the idea of the, uh, you know, the, the Star Wars hologram. I wish, <laughs> I wish I could project myself that way, but um, I live about 750 miles to the uh, southwest of you all in Colorado Springs. That's where I'm coming to you today from. And uh, I have been serving uh, nonprofit clients and specifically uh, largely religious organizations, churches and other ministries uh, for, for most of my career, honestly. And um, I, in my role with CLA, I'm an outsourced CFO and we, we uh, do outsourcing for churches and other ministries. Um, I was an auditor like Jason, but I did, got off the I got off that track uh, early on and I wanted to be more involved, kind of hands-on in ministry. And I uh, ended up uh, leaving public accounting to work for a ministry located in Denver uh, for about uh, 12, 13 years or so before getting into consulting. And uh, that was back in 2013, so it's hard to believe, but or 2013 with, with CLA, I actually started uh, doing consulting work back in 2008, so uh, that's a lot of fun. Um, I'm a, I, I was reflecting on some of my early church experiences. I was probably in church by about five years old and uh, had some very clear memories. I was just thinking about uh, I, just a random memory of being uh, baptized in a swimming pool when I was <laughs> probably five or six years old, and I can still remember that very vividly today. So. Um, you know, we, we are here to hopefully empower uh, the, the church through, through better principles and practices. We know the, the goal is, is ministry, uh, and, and sometimes accounting is seen as a necessary evil, uh, but, but we also think it's very important that it be done well, and we steward, steward the money that, that the Lord provides in a way that uh, it is honorable and, and, and advances the work. So excited to be with you here today. Sorry I couldn't be in person, but um, hopefully this will, will work well. Holographic enough, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, so unlike, unlike Jeff, uh, I can barely handle my volunteer role as my church as treasurer. 
because every month, you know, those uh, books need to be reconciled and I have to pull out the bank statements and do all those different things. And Oh look, we're meeting on Monday and I haven't even started. So <laughs> <laughs> that's how it goes most months. And so I'm actually hoping to take some uh, information back and Jeff will have some good uh, tidbits of information as we go through this, this process here today. So um, since we only have a few people, why don't we just go around quick in the room so we kind of understand uh, your backgrounds as well so we can tailor the, the presentation a bit. So I'll start with you. Uh, my name is Jessica Cruz. My husband and I uh, planted a church in 2016, a uh, Spanish-speaking church in Bismarck, North Dakota. Who knew? But we needed wow. one, so yeah. so I'm uh, hoping to just get a better understanding of uh, how, how to do things well. I, you know, crash course. I'm the pastor of everything else, so I hope I'm doing things right. We keep all the receipts, but is there something more I should be doing? So. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Peter Olson, I came on as the executive pastor at Church Plant in Southwest Fargus uh, back in January, so kind of trying to figure out what's this all mean, what am I supposed to be doing, are we doing it all right? right. Yeah. Um, yeah, so just blessed to have some people on the team that are volunteering like yourself perhaps, but sure. yeah, awesome. just give us some knowledge. So. Okay. I'm Roger Wilbin, I'm a board member uh, here at First Church of Evangel, and I'm currently the treasurer of the church. And I'm Dan Seitz, I'm the business administrator here at Evangel. I'm Joel Schwartz, I'm the kids pastor in Dickinson. I'm in this room to run the iPad and tell you when 10 minutes was. <laughs> <laughs> well, the host with the most, I like it. Thank you. And you might learn a thing about accounting, we'll see. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited for it. <laughs> you don't have to say that, that's fine. No, I am. Okay. I like it. I like it. And I'm, uh, I'm Tyler Amon. Um, planted some churches in the Middle East, and currently, uh, as a side role, the operations director for a ministry in the Middle East, mm -hmm. and of which finances are causing some trouble. Mm -hmm. So, anything I can learn about the finance arena yeah. to assist with that would be very helpful. Perfect. And so, yeah, so Middle East, and you're here, so you're here and there, right? You're back and forth? I'm, I'm more here right now. I was here the last eight years, but I've been here for nine months, kind of back there during nine months here, but awesome. back and forth a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Very good. All right. Well, with that, we'll kick things off. Here's the learning objectives. And so hopefully identify financial and operational challenges facing churches today. We know there are many out there. And so it really comes down to what are the pain points? And so and we'll try to make this interactive as well. So if you're is there a question on a certain thing, or why can't we do this differently? You know, just uh, for sure reach out to us on these things. Um, we'll look at the structure, the process, the systems, the people that go into making the accounting function work. And then uh, we have some examples as well uh, from organizations that we can cover as we go through. So, so about CLA, um, there's probably too many slides on the about, but I'll just cover these very quickly. So. Um, our purpose is uh, to create opportunities for our clients, our people, and our communities. And so, again, what that means is that we want to you know, find the pain points. We're not just here to, to sell something. We want to make sure that we're actually adding value. And even if it's just a, a basic audit, you know, I'm not sure if any churches around here have an audit requirement or you know, sometimes if there's debt or if there's, a, like in Minnesota, there's a requirement that there's uh, revenue exceeding $750,000 for a nonprofit. They need to have an audit. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we can come in as a low cost leader and just do just the audit, but a lot of times there's other things, especially in the not for profit realm, where we can come in, and especially with, with Jeff and his background, you know, I, I kind of look at things a little more high level from the audit perspective. He comes in and he overturns all those rocks and says, okay, let's do this better, let's do this differently. You could save 20 hours of your month if you didn't do this and this, and instead you did this way. So, uh, various things you can do there. Um, and so, our, our advantage and the thing that sets us apart, and maybe not so much anymore, but we really try to industry specialize. And so, we do have 14 different um, industries across our firm, one of which is nonprofit. And so, that's all I do 100% of my time is, is nonprofits, um, whether it be audit or tax or consulting. So, all right, so 121 locations, uh, over 1,000 principals and planning directors. A lot of people, 7,500, I think that has grown. And now, Jeff, when you started, 
How many people do we have? A couple thousand? Yeah, if I that? think it was maybe 2,500 or something like that. Hmm. So we, we're definitely engrossed in what I guess you could say. And so a lot of numbers here, I would just focus on the very top one, which says that we, uh, that we do serve more than 10,000 nonprofits across the, the hmm. country. So, um, and so our, our main focus then is really, you know, there's the big four, you guys have all heard of the big four, like the ENY and the Price Waterhouse, Coopers, and some of those, and um, we're within the top eight as far as revenue mm -hmm. size, but our main bread and butter is the small to mid-sized companies and nonprofits, mm -hmm. and so that's where a lot of larger ones are kind of shying away and saying, ah, you're too small, we can't serve you anymore. We're saying, no, we want you guys, and we want to help you mm -hmm. as much as possible. And so that's why this is a perfect fit, because churches kind of fall into that, that smaller model Usually, now there's some exceptions, of course, as, as Jeff knows too. There's some mega churches out there too, mm -hmm. but uh, by and large, they're just a lot of smaller community based churches. Here's the map of where we're located, and the, the first couple lots, which is we're in Minnesota in the St. Cloud there. The one that's closest to North Dakota, I think, would be Alexandria. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, I guess on this one, I would just say we're fortunate to have remote technology. <laughs> between, between teams and uh, we have a, a portal that you can upload things to and, and of course email everything else um, you know there's definitely other ways I mean I used to be a road warrior flying out to the DC area mm -hmm. and heading up to International Falls Minnesota and it could be you know, a lot more kind of like this day for me but I, I actually kind of appreciated this day this, this nice drive actually because uh, you know I think if I couldn't make this work out, I might be a truck driver. <laughs> <laughs> so, but with that, I will turn it over to Jeff to kind of go over. Well, actually, I guess I'll first start by just asking you just a couple of questions that we put in here too. So, so in your churches then, how many of you have, I guess, I guess does anybody have an external source working on the books? Outsourced accountant or anything like that? Okay. Uh, any volunteers working on the finances? How many volunteers raise your hand? Okay, yeah. <laughs> and so it looks like, yeah, it's a lot of, and so are you, is that you then? Are you wearing both hats, essentially? Yeah, I keep track of the numbers, you know, as best as I can. Okay. <laughs> so, I mean, thankfully we started small, so I've got, you know, there's room to grow and learn, so. Sure. I don't want to mess up and <laughs> really bad or something. So who, Who's using QuickBooks to run the books? Okay. And what what about the others? Are you using Excel? Hey, that works. I just, you know, write the Excel. numbers down. That's like my father in law's S Corp, you know, very minimal activity. It works. Right. How about you? We're in Applo. Okay. Uh, was that Applo that I hear? Yes. Okay. Okay. So what about you? We're kind of a hybrid. We okay. do it internally and we also um, we, we're also partnered with a group called Time Binds. Mm. We're not officially registered as a nonprofit, mm. but Time Binds is, so under their umbrella, we okay. qualify as a nonprofit. Okay. And so you're just kind of in charge of a, a piece of their larger organization. Then. Yeah, so all donations go through them for audit. Is it a tax deductibility? Yeah. Yep. All that. Yep. Okay. Okay. Very good. Jason, thank you so much, and I, I'm excited, you know, I'm excited for the smaller group that we have today, because usually what that means is it gives us a little more flexibility on, on group and interaction and, and really finding out what are the things that are problematic for you. And uh, what we have up here on the screen is just a number of challenges that, that we run into uh, in talking to church leaders. Um, I was literally just about an hour before jumping on this this call today. Uh, was on a call with another pastor out in Maine, and and uh, he says my my you know finance director has just resigned. I'm, I've got to do something. Um, you know, can you help? Or uh, we we regularly hear frustrations with the software systems, or you know. I know the accounting, you know, the accounting has to be done a certain way, but 
my ministry people don't don't mm -hmm. know how to interact with it. They don't know what how to get good reports out of it. Or maybe maybe they're even keeping their own Excel uh, file and it's outside of the accounting system. Uh, they, these are a lot of the types of challenges that, that we just hear literally every day. I mean, probably uh, in a week, I probably have four or five of these conversations that you see up on the screen here. And so maybe we could just pause just a second and just ask the group just to kind of weigh in on, wh you know, what are the challenges that, that you all are experiencing? Who wants to start with that question? Raise your hand. Yeah, I will. Um, so I kind of reluctantly took this operations director position and uh, upon, I was on the board prior and when I fell in on this position, I, I realized that we don't have policy anywhere. Mm -hmm. And my background has been establishing policy and strategic vision and stuff for companies. And so I tried to get involved in every area of the organization and finance is causing a lot of issues probably with cultural uh, miscommunication on, on they're not being policy and what policy, we, what little policy we did have didn't seem to be communicated clearly in writing. And so right now we're just having, um, we're having issues within finance on how to pay the guys, um, ensuring they clearly understand what's going on. And then we've also had some issues with accounting practices and, and some money, a little bit of money disappearing between Pine Barns and another organization that tried to take us um, handle our money in the UAE and it's, it's complicated because of where we're at as well because we can't yes. just have money coming into the Middle East mm -hmm. without it being flagged yeah. mm -hmm. especially especially as part of a religious organization so we operate under a we're a media group mm -hmm. um, so I don't know if I explained that very clearly it's a lot of finance things going no, I think you bring up a lot of the things that we hear about you know the policy was huge the communication side got the oversight who's, yeah. who's reviewing yeah. that yeah. Um, a lot of very good good points and good good concerns anybody else yeah. Dr. Mal? I would say probably for a large church like ours right um, there's just inefficiency in how we handle our credit card purchases mm -hmm. and so I know that there's solutions in place that could be another lens to simplify that but I, I think of the amount of time our staff would spend to make sure they have receipts for everything and then getting it coded right and I think there's a lot of inefficiency yeah. and time wasted in that. For sure. Yeah, PLA has forced the employee to enter, what's the policy, I think if it's $25 or less, there's no receipt required, mm -hmm. although most times I just throw it in anyway. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's over $25, you're forced to, if you want to get the money on your next pay stub, you better have a, a receipt attached. And I suppose someone could just put a piece of paper in blank, but I mean, I've never even thought to try that because <laughs> somebody would catch that, right? Yeah. <laughs> that would be a problem. And so yeah. if, you, if you can kind of have that built-in motivation, right, then it's like, hey, okay, if you want that, then yeah. we're kind of, kind of a push down the counter, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love when I, when we do, you know, sometimes for an audible, do a, a element of surprise, and so we'll test credit cards from time to time okay we'll look at the January statement and we get it it's like here's a statement and here's just a box of receipts and it's, we're going ah do you have a lighter month because <laughs> that's a lot of stuff to look at but um yeah Jeff do you have any feedback on that? yeah the, the other this these, this is great this is fantastic um I, and, and I think we had some good good information hopefully to share I know one that has has also come up for me quite a bit in talking to ministry leaders um is especially for smaller churches uh the pandemic really brought home this issue of man it's so hard to get the check signed you know it's like mm -hmm. um you know we, we we're working with many of our church clients to help them move to sort of like a cloud-based uh bill payment solution mm -hmm. so that you know you don't necessarily have to come in and sign checks you know because with the pandemic, that was that was difficult, and and 
Um, and so I think that one ties in a little bit to the credit card one is just sort of like, how are we optimizing disbursements inside of the church so that it's maybe a bit more modern, a bit more easy to get done, and yet still have good good internal controls uh, around that so that we don't have uh, money walking away um, inappropriately. Well, I hope you can teach me that because uh, twice a month, right around the 14th or 15th and the very last day, I get a text message that's between me as treasurer and the president. It just says, checks are ready for signing. And then it's like, oh, I wasn't planning on going over there tonight. And even though I'm kind of in the back of my mind thinking this could happen, I bike to work today, now I gotta go all the way across town on a bicycle. Um, and so yeah, it's always a struggle. And so Jeff, I think I might be uh, calling you up for my own personal needs. For okay, the church after there you this. go. We'll, we'll uh, get them set up, Jason. And it's also paper, it's paper payroll and it's paper vendor payments too. And then it's always like, oh, okay. It's kind of a last minute thing where Oh, you're here. Quick sign these checks. Oh, and maybe you just look at the invoices too while you're at it. But then, if we're signing when someone's not there, to, if something doesn't quite seem right, you got to follow up later and try to figure that out. But yeah, so it's definitely uh, an issue there. But yeah, but absolutely. Here's a, here's and a few more. Or go ahead, Jeff. Yeah. Oh, you know, just was gonna say, well, you know, we see a lot of these um, these elements uh, throughout churches uh, that are that are creating inefficiencies um you know we, we we'll talk to churches where they haven't seen a financial report or you know they're they're using a system that it's just it's just broken it, it's hard to use um and who, the gentleman who said they're using applos i was uh just on a call with a pa this pastor in maine and and he mentioned he was on applos and, and quite happy with it so there are there are good systems out there um, but some of the older ones that, that, that churches have been in a long time, they, they just haven't responded well to the cloud environment. So they're still trying to kind of play catch up. And, and that can, those can really bog, bog things down. So we, we see this, we see a lot of turnover. We see it, people wanting to retire from the finance function. Um, you know, there, it's kind of the, the trend of aging America and, um, the younger generation maybe not coming up as, as strong. And so it's like, how do we get this work done? It's, it needs to be done. It's a part of our stewardship commitment. Um, and so a lot of these challenges um, we, we're very familiar with. And uh, you know, we look for how can we, add, how can we help? How can we bring solutions to the table that, that can help you overcome some of these challenges? We were talking beforehand just about how there can be that quick turnover, right? And then is there always someone available that can just step right in and know what to do? No. And so, uh, you know, I, I suppose that's where you you come in if you're uh, the outsourced uh, person, right? You, you didn't I'll ask a question. In, yeah. In, in the Minot Church just this week, the executive pastor died. Yeah. Uh, 52 years old. I mean, wow. they don't necessarily have pathways to the computers and all this kind of stuff. So yeah. they are going through uh, the throes of somebody dying and the grieving, but the business of the church needs to go on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. good wow. question there. That's a quick turnover. Yeah. Well, you always, you know, say, well, what would happen if someone so and so gets hit by a bus, right? And then this really does happen. Case yeah. in point. Yeah. And so. Yeah, and you know, you might see where if it's a volunteer that's on the board, and sometimes I think to myself, you know, first the pastor calls me up and would you prayerfully consider being the treasurer? <laughs> and as you know, I, I didn't take his call because I'm like, oh, I'm not gonna answer this right now. I'm too busy with other work I have going on. I'm sure he'll cancel it, but it left a voicemail. <laughs> and uh, in the meantime, he talks to my wife at the kids' school. He calls my parents and talks to them. Oh. The very next morning, well, did you prayerfully, prayerfully consider that yet? I'm like. You only gave me like eight hours. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So I guess my answer is yes. But, uh, <laughs> but it's like, okay, then you start looking and you're going, okay, how long is this term? Three years, but I'm also filling in for the guy that also is transferred out of the church. And so, yeah, you just, whether it be voluntary or a paid position, um, yeah, good question, Simon. It definitely is happening. Um, and then I guess another question I would have for you guys is, you know, as far as the, the governance structure and, and the finance committees, how often would you be to go over finances, or do you need to go over finances? And the challenge again was for our little church, uh, 
we don't know how any of this is supposed to be. There's no how, how to do finance within a church, how to do taxes. So when we first started with a couple hundred dollars in our little church account, I had to sit there and Google and go to, and I actually called someone at IRS and said, how do you do taxes for our church? Uh -huh. <laughs> so, and they said, because, you don't have to, right? Uh, exactly. <laughs> I mean, you, you still file whatever, but, um, and so that, so what we, the, what we do is we, I think month, once a quarter, the leadership, we all get together to, but like this whole, the idea of budgets, like I don't, this is stuff where no, nobody taught, t told us how to do it. And so we're just trying to stumble and figure through and, you know, is there a right way? Is there a wrong way? So that's at least for our little, our little yeah. cases. Mm -hmm. We just don't know. And so we I'm don't assuming know. that you haven't read Robert's Rules of Order. No, <laughs> oh, the Carly Pro stuff. Yeah, you know? yeah. The, the well, like my husband's procedures. from Nicaragua. When they do their general council stuff, the national assembly do that. They don't do any of that. So, sure. I mean, mm -hmm. I did speech and debate in high school, but I don't hardly remember it. Now, right? so. yeah. <laughs> and, and, and I'm not talking about this Robert, I'm talking, yeah, Mr. Robert. Right. <laughs> but uh, yeah, even at, even with ones that do know, I mean, the, the one meeting that we had, we think, okay, it's gonna be an hour of time, and we're talking about how we're trying to get more volunteers, right. but yet if we're gonna hold a three hour long meeting, <laughs> that's not gonna help right. us, right? Yeah. And so yeah. then I kind of talked to the president, and he's like, yeah, we should really put a time limit for each, <laughs> each uh, shout out or each uh, department to, to say their piece. Because you know we don't need to talk about what to make for Valentine's Day if there's a couple. Yeah, what, right. what type of cookie to make? You know, it's like okay, let's let's table that for later. <laughs> right? So, all right. Well, um, I guess with that, let's get into some solutions, huh? Yeah. So, I had the the privilege of I, I finally downloaded Audible, which I hadn't done for the longest time. Mm -hmm. I thought, okay, I don't have time to read physical books as much given my my work. But uh, I've been listening to this on the way up, and I got through about half of it, and there's a lot of good tips and tricks, and uh, Jeff, I'll let you kind of talk yeah. a little bit about it. Well, I, I figure everybody that came to this session probably wondered what, what we were selling when we said <laughs> effortless church accounting <laughs> practices. <laughs> um, but it's, it's based on, on this book. I don't know if you can see that, but it's a, it's a book by Greg McEwen. Uh, called Effortless. Uh, I read the book and, and it's it's a great book and I thought that there were some some interesting um, parallels to to accounting um, and I'll tell you th there is no silver bullet. We're not offering the, 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 the easy path that, that, that just fixes all your problems without any effort but the the concept of effort is maybe we could be doing it easier. Maybe there's a simpler way to do it. Um, and so the kind of the two principles I'll focus on from the book, the first one is to ask yourself, what if this could be easy? So what he explains in there is that many times we're, we're enmeshed in a process because it was given to us or that's the way we've always done it. And we're thinking, I got to do this step, and then this step, and then this step, and then this step. And he says, no, the first thing you need to do is ask yourself, what if this could be easy? You know, if, if we were going to do a report, uh, you know, to the elders of the church, for example, we could start by saying, you know, what, what, what could we do that, that would make this easier? And that's a good starting point because it kind of leads into the second point, which is, Simplification comes not by uh, not by just having a lot of really clear steps to take. It's actually by eliminating steps. Mm -hmm. And when you eliminate you eliminate the non-essential steps, you end up with a better, easier, and more effortless practice. And he 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 has a really cool story in the in the book about Steve Jobs. And the thought this was back when. Uh, Apple had the, they were trying to design the, um, I don't know if you remember, it was like it's called iDVD and you could burn a DVD, you, you, you'd have your movie and then you'd just click a button and, and, and burn your DVD. And he had all these software engineers that had come in with, with all these ideas and like PowerPoint slides of how, how many steps it was, what was going to happen and, and uh, Steve Jobs told them to stop the PowerPoint. He went up to the whiteboard, 
he drew a big box and he put a circle in it and he said the user's gonna put their DVD in, they're gonna click this button and they're gonna have a DVD. And and he said that that was so genius because you know these these engineers that had just spent all this time and he just cut to the very essence of what needed to happen in the in the in the experience of the end user. And so uh, I love that story. I'm kind of a, a bit of an Apple nerd, so um, I, uh, I I thought that was really cool. You know, saying to be able to see through all the steps. Yeah, the other one I, I rather listen to, I guess, on the way up was with uh, Jeff Bezos and the Amazon piece. Yeah, that's where a great they had one. Like a, it was like so many different steps to purchase a product online, and uh, you know, every single time you logged in, you had to re-enter in all your information mm -hmm. and. He said, no, one click. Yeah. We want you to be able to just do one click. And now today, it's the easiest thing ever to purchase anything you want. Too easy. Right, right. <laughs> uh, for the whole yeah. family, but uh, uh, very convenient. So <laughs> user friendly. So. All right. So with this, so, I, so kind of the idea that, that we want to kind of get across today is um, this session is really about a process. It's, it, it more is a way of framing the challenges that you have than it, it may be about specific, specifically solving your problems. Now, I, I think what we're probably gonna end up doing is maybe cutting short some of our, 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 some of the slides at the end and just have a little bit more back and forth so we can talk. Uh, very, very hopefully help, help, helpfully about your your specific situation. Uh, but what we believe, what we like to do as a firm, is a foundational piece, which is assessing. And um, so you could start. You probably have ten things, maybe twenty, thirty, forty, maybe more, that you could probably just close your mind, eyes and think of what should we do different. Go after this thing. Should do this differently. The budget's a mess. You know the the. The committees, my, my, my committees are need to be re, reformed or governing, do, governing policies, things like that. That's all good. We don't d dismiss those things. But we like to approach the problem in a kind of an orderly fashion and we assess each area of the church. Uh, and we do that through looking at your people your processes and your systems. And we break it down into those three kind of buckets. And in, in this case, the people side of it is a little different because it sounds like it's largely volunteer, um, you know, working on it. So it's not like a, a formal accounting department, um, but that doesn't mean you don't have people issues related to finances. M most, most organizations do, hey, most families do. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so there are people Air issues that we should acknowledge and try to uh, evaluate uh, along with our processes. Many times we see uh, errors. We see, you know, 10 people had to approve this thing when in reality maybe you only needed one or two people to approve something. Um, or, you know, hey, I, I, we tell them they have to fill out this form, then they have to scan the form, you know, then they have to email the form. You know, and then, but before you know it, there's so many steps, right? So we look very closely at, at your processes. And, and finally, we look at the systems. What are those accounting systems? What are those maybe bill payment or payroll systems? Uh, most churches have some type of a, 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 a church management software that may be tracking donations and, and group involvements and different ministries. How do those systems really work to facilitate good good financial reporting and where are maybe the challenges where those systems are are not working optimally so our our hypothesis here is that you you take an orderly approach and then do your assessment first before um before moving on um jason just curious from from your perspective when you think of your clients what what sets apart clients that implement change and those that, that don't, in your experience? Uh, well, one thing that I was thinking about when you were talking about 
information overload and too many checks and balances is that the opposite is also true. Mm -hmm. You have other times where it's just like, hey, sign this check real quick because we need it now. You know, and, and then it's like, well, where's that review process? And so, um, you know, I deal with, with some churches and some church related organizations where they might even have five CPAs on staff. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're crossing all the T's, dotting all the I's, they have it all down. But ironically, they're this one client of mine, um, they can't even pay a bill half the time because they have not received it in the mail yet. They're the only one of the few that still wants it to be paper mm -hmm. sent. Mm -hmm. So they can have that physical paper in hand yep. mm -hmm. because they don't want to have to deal with email or something. And they're just so ingrained in their old school system mm -hmm. um, that even getting financial drafts take like months after field work. And it's like, well, why do we have to spend all this time and why are your systems not set up to mm -hmm. get the information, get the financials prepared um, ahead of time. And so, I mean, it really does run the gamut on, on uh, too much control and lack of control, I guess mm -hmm. I would say. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I just wanted to jump around on it. Oh, okay, there we go. So. This, this slide, thank you, and thank you, that's, that's exactly, uh, you know, kind of kinds of things that we see. and. Um, the, re the reason we come in, a lot of times we're asked to come in and do these assessments for churches, but you can use the same approach that we're giving and you can kind of conduct your own assessment of your church by kind of following the same outline. And I, the thing I like about this is, is it's, it gets us through every single, you know, maybe not every problem, but it usually uncovers most of the challenges that you're having. But this last arrow on the far right where it says optimize, I can't say enough about this because this is where you have to make some hard choices about prioritization of, because you're gonna have way too many things you wanna change. We know you, if you try to do them all at once, it will not work. We know that sometimes change inside the church takes a while anyway. So you prioritize. And that prioritization allows you to say, I look at all these things and we're gonna pick maybe the top two or three to work on over the next quarter. And then we'll go into the, and we'll just kind of quarter by quarter, uh, try to make these improvements, but you know you're you're working off kind of a master list and you're prioritizing. So it's it's not like you have to, you know, conquer the world. You just have to get maybe one or two of these things done and then you'll start to see those changes so uh, for the gentleman in the back who was talking about you know there's no policy I'm like that's a great one let's identify what are the policy areas that are problematic that we don't have policy that we need policy and then let's prioritize them because policy takes a while it takes some interaction with leadership and um, you know you might go with the draft and have to discuss it a bit and then wean it down and uh, so, but if you have that prioritization, it really helps a lot and it, it gives you that roadmap for how you can make changes into your, into the finances over time. Communication, right? Communication is key. Yeah. And I think even it from is. your own personal standpoint, I mean, there's a lot of times we're all just either uh -huh. not say something because I don't want to hurt someone's feelings or like, oh, the, the office administrator, they're working so hard. They got enough on their plates. I'll just, I'll just take care of it. Don't worry about it. And then in the back of my head, I'm grumbling about it, going, "Oh, I wish there was a better way." Um, so yeah, communication. I mean, just get it out there, and you can even use it and say, "Hey, we're we're trying to improve the process. We'll just lay out all the different pieces, and then uh, work through it together, as opposed to trying to do it on your own." So. All right. So this. This first section here, so we'll, we, we'll give some examples and then um, kind of what some recommendations are if you were gonna start with the people side of things. And so when we usually come into a, a church that has an actual, like maybe a bookkeeper or two and maybe a finance director or an executive pastor, um, you know, we'll, we typically see these kinds of common issues like and, and everybody's working hard uh, but they don't have time to improve um, they, they perhaps don't have uh, the the tools that they that they need to get the job done 
And then this continuity of operations already been talked about. You know, it's like people retiring, people just the, we're in this great resignation as a country where, where employment is changing very rapidly, makes it very difficult. So, so we know that these challenges related to people, Jason and I did a little bit of brain, brainstorming around kind of the smaller church environment. If, even if you're the volunteer doing all the accounting work, um, what are the kinds of challenges that you might have related to finances? Do you see um, maybe other volunteer kind of leaders that are maybe spending more than they should or um, don't, don't or overstepping on how much authority they actually have? Um, do you have maybe a decision paralysis? You know, you've got too many people involved in, in making just financial decisions for the church. And so things are getting bogged down and meetings are taking so much longer because, because really it's, it's almost too many cooks in the kitchen. So these kinds of things I think exist. It's like, all right, what would be a way of kind of working through those, those issues? Um, and Jason, I don't know if you can go ahead and advance it maybe to the next slide. And these, these solutions, the idea that we have here is, is more for the established accounting department or finance department. But I think the idea is relevant. You can begin to brainstorm. How are you getting, how do you get the work done? Do you, do you continue to do volunteers for a while? Do you uh, look at outsourcing a part of it? I mean, outsource your payroll. Payroll is one, probably one of the least expensive areas that you could outsource. Um, there's a cost, you know, obviously a cost, but um, that takes care of all your payroll taxes and things like that. So, you know, you begin to kind of lay out what the problem is as it relates to the people and the finances and, and to start under asking questions about it. You know, do people understand their roles? Um, even asking people outside of finance, what do you wish were different? If you could, you know, talking to say a, a youth pastor or um, an adult ministries pastor and saying, how would it, how would things be better for you if finance was act, you know, if financials were being delivered in a timely way? Um, so it, it's a way of, assessing what people are doing and what could be done to improve upon that. I guess I have a question here now. So how many of you have to deal with payroll? Just you? Okay, that's good then. Because, <laughs> you know, not only is it potentially cheaper to have someone else that does this on a, you know, for their job do it um, continually and continuously. Um, like when I was trying to do payroll for the father-in-law quarterly basis, make sure the 941 is in there and the 940 at year end, and just to remember all those steps was mm. just way too much time and effort. Um, yeah. So once I gave that up and said, okay, someone that can actually do this, it's, it's money well spent, and not to have that, those IRS notices coming through all the time too was, was a big benefit. So um, yeah, that can definitely be a big benefit for the smaller orgs. Um, so our next next section to talk about just kind of again high level what are those process problems that you're facing um you know we do see as jason said there's typically not great in internal controls or segregation of duties and and what we're meaning by that is you know if if, if one person has access to the check stock is that same person able to you know, enter a check in the general ledger, and is that same person actually able to sign that check? You know, we we see a lot of challenges that smaller organizations and churches have, um, but also we see we see sort of the pendulum kind of swing the other way, and it's it's like there's more paper, there's more uh, processes that people have to fill this form in this form. Um, uh, the credit card is a is an example where um, you know how do you manage that in a way where there's accountability but you're decentralizing the purchasing you're allowing them because it's convenient 
Um, you need to be able to go have coffee or buy certain supplies for their ministries. How do you manage that process and make it make it essentially optimize it? Um, Jason, you were talking about a church or a group that did kind of paper drafts. Have you got any other examples of processes that you've seen in the church where, that are that are just cumbersome? Yeah, just the whole reporting process and the timeliness of getting information to the stakeholders. I mean, if all of a sudden you're getting a, a financial statement months later, mm. you know, how does that benefit the, the cash flow? I mean, in some cases, I mean, did you guys take advantage of the PPP loan this past year or anything like that? Mm -hmm. We were aware of it. Okay. And so many churches did, and so all of a sudden it was like, hey, look at this, we're flush with cash, we're sitting really good here. And unfortunately it got forgiven, but then now, you come out of that and you're thinking, well, attendance, I'm not sure where it's at with your church organization, but in many areas, attend, like in-person attendance is down as things kind of convert to this whole hybrid model like we have here today. Um, but what does that mean for the offering plate, right? And so uh, without that timely information and then also the many individuals don't really understand the finances and so you're producing this beautiful report, this balance sheet, mm -hmm. income statement, budget versus actual, and you say, here it is, well, yep, it's approved. It's like, well, what about these vari variances going on? I mean, does anybody want to talk about that? So trying to identify who is the budget holder and who should make those those decisions that you're looking at, at finances, um, I think that can be a, a tricky subject at times too, so. Yeah, oh, that's, that's, a, that's a great a great point. I'm, I'm working with a church here in Boulder, Colorado right now, and it's kind of that, that lower right um, square where they've got staff that are doing, you know, they're, they're doing things, um, but the executive pastor is saying, oh, why am I not getting financial statements? You know, and we come in and diagnose, well, you know, they're so busy doing all the processing work that nobody's, nobody's really following the steps for what you do to actually close the books at the end of the month. You know, reconcile the accounts, make sure there's no, nothing that, that, that hasn't been submitted. You know, typically they're just chasing credit card receipts to try to get the, get it closed. And then it's, and then it's, it's, there's delays. And, and as a result, they don't know where they're standing financially. Um, so we see a lot of these, of these types of, of processes, but what can you do about that? Um, so this is kind of that prioritization piece where you might take, come up with three processes that you, uh, what you look for is you look at something that's causing frustration. You look at something that's taking too long um, and, and start and, and have a meeting, try to get people together. What, what is it about this that's, that, that's not working in this process? You know, try to, uh, a, great, a great suggestion is to use a whiteboard and some, uh, some of these uh, post-it notes here, and 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 you map the process out. Just stick it on the whiteboard. You know, it goes, it starts here, it goes to here. You know, then it goes to this person. And before you know it, you start seeing. Look at this. Why is that so many steps? Uh, and your your goal is to kind of redesign it and eliminate steps. And you know, maybe we don't need the senior pastor to approve. You know everything. Maybe he approves anything over, say, a thousand dollars or something like that. Um, so these are kind of things that you can do to help reduce the number of steps and make things easier uh, by looking at your processes. You want to um, on this one, but yeah, looks like the uh, yeah, right side is better than the left. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this was supposed to be visual, it, it just a visual example of all the steps of like an old bill payment process. And then like if you use sort of a cloud-based bill payment, uh, we use a product called bill.com. It's very popular. Uh, it's not too expensive. And the bills can, you know, the bills can be put into bill.com. You can notify person one, person two. They get notified by an email that they have something to approve. They look at it on their phone or their computer. They approve it. It, it just keeps it from having to move a piece of paper around the office. Um, and then bill.com is the one actually writing the check. They, they make the payment. Hmm. You don't have to write the check. Um, and, and so there's all kinds of good, good controls <laughs> in there. So we're getting the 
minutes. We're at 3.52. I got the 10-minute warning already, so time's a flying. Yeah. I, I see that, Jason. I feel like I feel like we we had you know we had more. Uh, we should have cut our cut our proposed thing down a little bit, but um, and and we want to I think end with maybe some just some time to answer your questions. Um, but the the last piece is the systems piece. Is we see a lot of overuse of Microsoft Excel. We see uh, people. But I love Excel. It works so well. Yeah, you know, they, they love it. It's hard to maintain it, right? It's hard. It's hard to bring a full cohesive. I think uh, I heard that ninety-five percent of all Excel spreadsheets have an error in it somewhere, mm -hmm. whether yeah. it be summation, cross yeah. split, whatever. Yep. And so, you know, that's yep. something to keep in mind. It's it, it, that's a that's a key thing, and and yeah. one that Church Hoy is dealing with. They have volunteer. He would take everything out of QuickBooks, put it into Excel try to manipulate it to get all these pretty reports. Mm -hmm. And it was great. Like he, he was literally a computer scientist. He knew how to do all this <laughs> stuff. But the problem was that he didn't have time for it all. So it sat around for like weeks after month end. Mm -hmm. And it was like, guys, let's just use the tools that we have. It, it's great that you have this pretty reports, but let's let's just try to use what we have and get the job done so we can, you know, timely information is better than beautiful information. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. that's a good point. Yeah. Uh, just some questions to ask yourself, and, and we can easily make these slides available to you all afterwards um, if, if you want to take some time and, and do some of this assessment yourself. Um, but really just asking about your systems, you know, like, um, I, I think like the Afloat system has both the accounting and the donor church management side of it, probably all, all together, if I remember right, but it's cloud-based, um, you know, it's, is it, is it, are your departmental ministry leaders, are they able to use the, the, the tools that you have, um, and, and so we just ask some good questions about the software, it's, with more, more, sometimes you need an actual needs assessment done, and CLA does needs assessments, and and um, uh, that's a bit more of a formal approach, but it really forces you to look at uh, all the requirements you have for your software. Uh, so let me stop there, and I wonder if Jason, you can kind of bring us to the closure and see if there's a way we could just talk. About get a few questions on the table before. Yeah, I, I, wanted, before to for sure, I wanted to share this slide here because I think this might be important for those that have limited individuals as part of their team. And so this here, this was put up by the, I believe the AICPA, which is the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants. And it really kind of shows, okay, if you want to have a proper segregation of duties, you can accomplish a lot with even just two people but even better with three and then with four. And so, you know, the, the biggest thing is that you want to always have a documented review and approval process in place. And you also, to have that proper segregation of duties, you, you don't want the person that signed the checks also approving invoices and also having custody of the assets, whether it be the, the checking accounts or whatever. And so that's where, like in my case, the, the payroll and the actual approval of the invoices is one person hand, person's hands. I come in later and I do the, the bank rec, for instance. And so it's a separate part where now I'm going to be able to see, okay, is this an unusual payment that was made? And if I have a dollar for every time I've heard about a, a fraud that's happened, um, whether it be just a local uh, youth hockey association or basketball association, there's so many times where it's like, oh, the, yeah, they, they've said that the money's good and here's the reports. Well, does anybody actually check it across to the bank statement mm -hmm. to that report and make sure that there's there's continuity and it's all reconciled properly. Um, so yeah, definitely something to keep in mind there. Um, you know, I guess I have a few more on here. The employer retention credit, that's something that a lot of our church um, clients have taken advantage of because there's a, a very large credit out there. If it's just a very limited staffing, maybe not quite as lucrative, but if you have uh, more staff, um, definitely something to look at and we, we assist with that as well. And you know, so I think I said before that we do audits, we do tax returns, we have a whole bunch more beyond that, uh, whether it be workforce recruiting, 
Uh, cybersecurity, we have a whole team that works on internal and external penetration testing, uh, phishing campaigns, email phishing. You know, they're constantly trying to get us to click these different links, and if we do, then we're on this naughty list. And so there's, there's a lot of different ways you can go about it. But we have examples where, you know, executive director gets an email from someone else saying, please move $100,000 to this this uh, vendor for this payment, and they, they do it because it's like, well, that looks legit, and I'm supposed to make a payment on this developer fee, and next thing you know, it was completely false, right. you know, and so uh, sometimes they get it back, and sometimes they don't, so. Um, additionally, I just wanted to showcase that because we focus so much on the small to mid-sized nonprofits and other organizations, we try to get back through hosting webinars, um, we do articles, blogs, roundtables in our local areas as well, and hybrid uh, events like this as well. And so if you go to claconnect.com, uh, you can pretty much get to any type of thing. I know Google works very well too, you can always Google different things you have in your mind, uh, but we do try to speak more specifically to those issues affecting nonprofits and churches. And in fact, we do have a page, um, let me just take that down too, and you'll get there by going to claconnect.com, where you can then um, check out what we have for religious organizations. I think those are all hyperlinks as well. If you click onto them, you get more information. And so there's a lot of different things out there, a lot of different resources. Just want to make sure we could cover that uh, before the end of our time here today. Um, so I guess, yeah, we are coming up on time just like that. So wow, it you know, flies by when you're having fun or something like that. Um, so we didn't get into any major, you know, solutions for you, but if you have any questions now or if you wanted to ask them later, um, I will say too, so if you want more information, I'm not sure how often it comes out, but you can also sign up for our blogs and our articles um, that we do write, just so you're notified of anything new, um, whether it be a new credit on the horizon or, or what have you. Um, there's, we have different teams in place across our employee base that focuses on making sure that all the relevant content is out to individuals. So. All right, any questions, specific or otherwise? Or are you going, oh, what's this next event gonna be? <laughs> what's the next session? I can jump out. Clear as mud, right? <laughs> Finance is fun. <laughs> well, thank you very much for your time and your information yeah, and sharing. Thanks for having us, and it's been yeah. a pleasure. Yeah. Now, I don't know if any of you are uh, Part of the church network, uh, we uh, I'll be uh, there in uh, St. Louis in July. Uh, we'll be speaking there. We'll have a booth there. Um, they're, they're a great resource with a lot of a lot of resources for administrators. If you've never heard of the church network, um, but uh, recommend them too as a resource for you all. Thank you.